Hey guys, this is Donnie from databases.biz. This is part two of learning MS Access. So in this video, we're going to create two tables in our Access database um, based on this spreadsheet right here, which is work orders. And in the description below, you can find a link to download this if you want to follow along. Um, also remember to go to databases.biz because I have a learning management system there. So if you want to log in, you can track your progress and everything and keep up where you left off. All right, so to get started, we need to create our database first. So then you um, go to wherever you have your Access software at installed, um, and then click on Access. And then here, we're going to click on Blank Database. Um, and I'm going to go kind of fast so you can pause this if you need to. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I possibly can. Um, and we're going to do a lot more later on as well. So there's lots of stuff to come um, besides this video series to help you learn Microsoft Access. All right, so we're going to click on Blank Database. And right here, it's going to ask us where we want to save it at. So we're going to save it. I'm going to save mine on my desktop. You save it yours wherever you want. I'm going to name it Work Orders. It's just going to go Work Orders Database. And just hit OK. All right, and then we're going to click on Create. And right away, it starts you off with in a, in a table view. Um, I'm going to close that because I like to start us from scratch. I want us to build this database from scratch. I don't want to, um, just to show you real quick, you could just click short text right here, name the field, wherever you want, and just go along and do the same thing uh, and add all your fields and stuff. But I'm going to close this and I'm going to need to change some stuff because I had this one previously. I'm going to hide these because we, we don't need to see this. This is underlying system stuff, so we need to get rid of that. All right, so you're going to click on Create tab up here at the top, and then you're going to go to Table Design. And just a quick note, um, if you can't see this really well, you may need to change your settings on this video. Um, sometimes YouTube will it'll either put you in HD mode or SD mode, so you can change it to 1080p HD um, and enlarge the video to see it fully and clearly. All right, so Table 1, we're going to go back and look at our spreadsheet. So these are the fields that we want to have in table one. We're going to have employee ID, last name, first name, and hire date. So keep those in mind. So the first thing we're going to do, this table here, we're going to call, it's going to be end up being called a tech, um, technicians. So we're going to go, first thing we're going to do is do tech ID. And what you want to do always in your database is to create a primary key for every one of your tables that you create. So it's in here under data, tape, data types, you can Google what, data, what different data types there are. Um, we're going to use an auto number because this is going to automatically create a unique ID for every record we input into this table, which is what we want. And so I'm going to click auto number. And then down here, you can see it says index duplicates. OK, but we don't want duplicates. We want, we want a unique ID. So up here, we're going to click on primary key. Now, what I could have done is I could have just hit went here and selected that but we also it helps access when your database starts getting larger and larger and larger um, have a primary key which will be indexed it'll allow you know it's kind of like a cache of a website you know your websites you keep going to frequent to the same website all the time um, it creates a cache so a lot of things will load faster it's similar with a database it'll just load faster if you index um, fields that need to be indexed normally it's just one or two fields all right, so the next thing we need is we need employee ID. Now, this isn't going to be an auto number, but it is going to be unique. We're only going to have one employee ID. Um, going back to the spreadsheet here, you can see John Burton here. His employee ID is 11111. Um, so we want to go over here and down here at the bottom. And we can leave this short text. This doesn't matter for the employee ID part. You can just leave that. Um, probably for the field size right here, it says 255. I would probably just change that to 20. We'll never be larger than that. Um, for the index, we do want it to be indexed, but we want it to be no duplicates. Now this is going to be a end up being a foreign key in our other table. So this is what's going to relate. So this is going to what's going to relate the two tables. We're going to have employee ID here, and we're also going to have employee ID over here for this. Um, and actually, what we can do is go ahead and insert and do we can copy this and paste it so i did control i highlighted the column control c 
come over here and then do control V. Eh, it's not gonna want to do that. Let's try this. Mm. Okay. Let's try something different. I think this top this uh spreadsheet maybe protect or something. So. so all I did was I just went down, highlighted them all that way. So there's always a way to skin the cat. And so I got I'm gonna leave that as employee ID too, but we're it's gonna end up being employee ID for all of these fields here when we get done. So let's go back over here. So we got that, that's the way we want it. Next thing we're gonna do is last name. And notice here when I'm typing last name, I don't put spaces. I like to, um, for the fields, um, putting spaces can cause you issues. So I like to just capitalize the first letter of each word in there and no, don't put spaces. But what you can do is down here in caption because this will help you when we create forms. You can put a space here. And what this caption is gonna end up doing is for the label on your form, for the field, the label, it's going to put that space there for you, but the actual table, the field for the table will actually not have that space, which makes it better for when you're programming and stuff. The next thing you're going to do is first name. Same thing here. And then down in caption, just do first name. And lastly, I like to add comments to my tables. And for comments, I'm going to do long text. Now you'll notice also, and I should show you this um, short text right here. Last name, we're never going to have 255 characters, hopefully. And the same thing with first name, we only need like 100 characters. And the reason we're changing these characters is we want to try to make the database as small as we can. And so you don't want to put more characters than you actually need. It just makes it, uh, creates a lot of dead space there that we don't really need to use. Um, comments is like remarks and everything. It allows you to put a whole lot of characters in there because you don't know what you're going to need when you input comments. All right, so we got that. And the next thing we're going to do is hit save. We're going to type T. I like to use T for the prefix and then name it technicians. All right, so that's our technicians and then just hit enter or OK. And then you can see right here, now it's created a table for us. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on view. And now we can see our table right here. We're gonna go over to our spreadsheet. All you can do is click in the very top column right there, hold down your shift key, and then click on, actually, sorry, let me take that back. Because we don't wanna copy in the fields, we already had the fields, we want the actual data. So I'm gonna click in the very first cell below that, hold down my shift key, click on the, for the last cell right here, hire date. And actually, I think we forgot to add hire date in there. So let's go back. Um, so click right here in comments. Up here, you can click insert row. Now we're going to do hire date. And then down here, we'll just say, well, first, before we do that, we're going to select date. This is actually a date field. So we're going to put date. And then for format for the date, I like to use the short date format. So we're going to select that. And then for caption, we'll go ahead and put the space in. All right, let's save it again and then go back to view. Now we got a higher date in there, we go over to the spreadsheet. So we'll start over, click in this cell, hold down your shift key, click on the last cell. And then you can do, hold down your control, shift, and arrow down, arrow. And you see that goes all the way to the bottom. And then you can do control C. And then over here, all you gotta do is click, left click here, and then drag until it highlights all these rows. We're not worried about comments because we didn't really add anything on the spreadsheet. And then do control V. And it's going to create duplicates. All right, so I did forget something. So I'll just hit escape. That's something I did forget. And sorry about that. So for the technicians table, it's actually we, we're not going to have duplicate employee IDs in here. The whole purpose of this is to create one unique record for each technician. So instead of, as you can see, you got all these repeating. Now we will do the same thing over here. These we will be able to have duplicate employee IDs because we're having multiple work orders. Over here we just need one. So I'm gonna highlight this very first one right here. Do the same thing we just did. Okay, and then you can go down to the next next person. You can create a pivot table if you know how to do that to make this a little easier for you, but I'm not gonna get into all of that. I'm just gonna go and, and so all I do here is I click here. Hold down the shift key to click those four. You can see that little red line there. And I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to go down to the next one. Doesn't matter where you pull that record out as long as you get that next record. 
Same thing, hold down the shift key, paste. Next person. Paste. I think I have six of these total. Paste. I believe there's one more. Yeah, right here. All right, let me paste that. It looks like I forgot. Let's see, Lopez. This one I got his higher date in there. So I'm just going to highlight it again and paste over it. All right, so now we got the technician table complete. So we got a total of um, six people, six technicians in here, all inputted, and we can just close this. And you can, create, you can see it created a uh, unique ID right here for us and everything. And so we're going to close that. And the next thing we're going to go create, table design again. And then this one is going to be work order. So I'm going to do WID. It's going to be an auto number. So I just hit A, or you can hit the drop down. So I just hit A. And up here I'm going to hit primary key. So that's my primary key for this table. Now this is where the, um, the form key comes in. So I'm going to do employee ID on this one like we did for the technicians. And this is going to leave it a short text. I'm going to make the let's see, 100 characters here. Let me just go back to design view here and make sure what I did. So I actually make it 20 characters. So I'm going to make that 20 characters. So I'll make this 20 characters. And for this one, duplicates can stay OK. We want duplicates in this one. We want multiple work orders for each technician. So this you're going to leave alone. All right, go back over here to the fields. And so we got, so we're starting here. We got work order. So we can say WO number. I believe this is short text. You can make this about 30 characters, we'll say. And then district. And I'm just going to go through, let's see, district. We can do it short text. Service, and just copy, short text, rush, short text. Okay, so here is a date field. So we're going to tab over and put date. And then down here, you're going to just type S for short date. And then work date. It's a date field, short date, text. I'm not going to import text. I won't need that. Um, I will, in a reporter query, we can say how many texts we need on a job, but for right now I don't need it. So don't even copy this over. Uh, warranty, labor, that's a yes, no field. So I'm going to leave it as short text. I'm going to change this to five characters. Over here, I'm going to select combo box. Then I'm going to make it for a value list. This is going to make a drop down menu. So what it's going to do So I'm going to type yes and no, semicolon, and then no. And then down here for um, column width, I just say three. Uh, and then for this, I want to change it from 16 to 50 to max it out. Auto, I'll just say three. Limit to list, yes, because I don't want anybody to be able to change the drop down items. And then I'm also going to make this no, because I don't want them to edit the drop down items. Now, default value, we won't always have a warranty labor. And record, so I'm going to put in quotation marks no, and that's it. So, this is going to create a drop down. Okay, the next thing is over here we got warranty labor, now we got warranty parts, which is also a yes no field. So, what I'm going to do for warranty parts, um, let's go back over to the database. I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to do control C, and click here, control V, and I'm just going to change that to parts, and then that's it. Now you've got your Combo box already created for you, makes it really easy for you. Um, come back over here, you got labor hours. So, and you see here, watch what happens my tab. It's going to tell me, give me, just give me an error right here about naming rules and stuff. And what that is, is because I copied it from Excel, there's a space right there and a space there. So, I'm going to fix that. So, for labor hours, you notice we got a decimal places here. So what we're going to do, this is going to be a number. And right here it says long integer, but actually what you want for those decimal places is a double. And you can change this auto to a two. And that takes care of that. Um, next, you got parts costs. 
get rid of the spaces here that we have. This is going to be currency. So you can select the drop down there. And then for the decimal places, also one and a half, two. Come back over, and then payment is our final one. So I'll put payment. Um, I'm going to leave that as short text, and I'll just put like 100 characters or so. And then last thing is I want to go ahead and put a comments field and change that to long text. And then I'm going to do save. This is going to be called T work orders. And okay, so once we've done that, now we hit view. And we're going to copy our stuff. So we got employee ID. Remember, we only need the, um, the field, the data itself. So let me make sure it's at the top, which I wasn't. So make sure you're up top, row two here. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, come over here, click on that. And I'm going to hold down my control shift, arrow down. I'm going to do copy. Oh, wait, we got one more thing here going on. Let's go ahead and, if you would, go ahead and right click and delete that text column. You don't need it. Ah, no, actually, let's move it. Let's just move this over. Because um, I don't want to throw out these formulas in here. We may have to refer back to them later. So all I'm going to do is just put it over here at the front. Now I'm going to do this again. Um, highlight here, hold down my shift key, click here. Hold down your shift key, click here. Then do control shift, arrow down. Copy, which is Control C. Then I'm gonna highlight. I'm gonna left click, and then I'm gonna drag. And you can see how it's highlighting all of this. And we don't have comments, so don't worry about that. And then I'm gonna do Control V to paste, and it's gonna paste a thousand records. All right, so now we got that in there, and so that's good. And then one last thing um, is we want to create a relationship. Relationships just helps the database understand if there's a relationship between two tables. And when you're building queries and doing other things in the database, it'll just work so much better for you to have that. So we have here, you can see we got employee ID. And then over here on our work orders, we also have employee ID. So what you're gonna do is just drag these over um, to one another. And then you're gonna get this here. We want to enforce referential integrity. What that does, that allows these boxes here. You see how they, I can now put check marks in. You want to do cascade update related fields. And what that says is if I change the employee ID, let's say I change 111 to 0000, 000, 000 or something, it's going to automatically change all the employee IDs in this table that's associated to this table to that same number. Um, so, and for this, we don't want to do a delete. What that does is that if I delete a, an employee from the technician's table, it'll automatically delete all the orders associated with that employee. But we wouldn't want to do that in the work orders database because we want to keep a history of all those work orders. And truthfully, I wouldn't delete an employee anyways. I would archive it. I would create a field with a yes, no archive record or something along that line. So I'd always just keep a record of those employees. All right, so we got that. That's what we want. We're going to click Create. And you can see right here it created that join. You can see that. And then if you want to change it, just double click on that line and it opens it for you. Then you're going to hit Save. And that's it. So I'm at 18 minutes right now. So I want to take a real quick, um, just to show you one other thing in here. Okay, so we got services and, and whatnot right here. Um, let me check this. So delivery. Um, all right, so it didn't, for whatever reason, they didn't put the full, um, I guess deliver is what they meant to do. I don't know. I would have thought delivery. Anyways, so for here, you know, we probably want drop down. So see, we got one, two, three, four, five fields. And so we can make these drop down. So what I would do is go into design view, and I'm just going to show you this on this one. Um, so we go over to service and then click on lookup. And you can use the drop down menu right here and select combo box. And then for here, you can select value list. And then you just say, and we'll refer back over here. Um, so we want, a, we want assess as one. So I can copy and paste that in there. And then you're going to separate it by a semicolon, delivers another. Separate, okay, so we got one. And then replace, separate by semicolon. Uh, let's see, install. And let's see, the other one. Let's see, we got, let's do filters here so we can see it. Let's see, repair. 
Right, so it says deliver install repair. Let's see. Repair. So it said that's, that's five right there, and I think that's what we have is five. All right, so we got that. Next thing is column width. We'll make that a three. And the column width is just, on column width, if I have more than one column, as you saw on another drop down menu in another database, and I'll just open it up and show you again real quick. I'll open up the old database I made. I go in here, and right here you can see this allows you to have multiple columns. So you see this was probably a two, and then a three, and then a one as far as space. So two, three, and one equals up to six. So if I had two, if I had, this is just three and two. If I had three and two for my columns, that would be five. And the reason that's significant, I'll tell you in a second. Um, for list rows, we'll put 50. That's the max you can go on list rows. And that just prevents you from having to do scrolling whenever you do your drop down. And then list width. So this is the accumulation of all of the pro or lists that of the rows that you made up here. And so we only have a three inch or so we just put three right there. Limit to list, that means that they have to select from the drop down menu. They can't just type anything in they want to. So I'd make that yes. And then value list edits. If I made that a yes, that means that when they're in there, they can change it. Let me just show you. So I'll make that a yes. We're gonna save it and then we're gonna open. And we'll go over here to service. So you see I got the drop downs and you see right here, this allows you to click on this and then add in new drop down line. Now, if you don't want them to do that, you just change that to no, save the table. And now when you come over here, you'll see that's not going to be there anymore. So they have to only select what you want here. And that's the great thing about how easy it is in access to make that so that way you can make this user friendly. Um, so what I suggest, this is the end right here. So I suggest you just go ahead for district, make drop down menus for district. Um, Yes, no field for rush. And you can see we have one right here, so you can just copy and paste it. Well, actually I take that out. You can't copy and paste it because now we have records in here. So you want to actually figure out how, go look and see how we did these, which is the same as doing this one here. Make this a yes, no field. Let's see, we're good on that. Payments, you could do this. Now for payments, because it has all this, these, um, high, or these uh, periods right here, to, um, you probably, when you go in there and create it for the drop downs, when you put the values in, put quotation marks around each of these it just will keep you from having any problems. All right, that's it. Please subscribe and like to the to this channel for me. Also, go to databases.biz and you know log in and track your work over there. It'll make it a lot easier for you. I appreciate everybody watching this video, and I hope you learned a lot. Um, definitely going to do a whole lot more videos on access, so you're going to learn a lot if you just keep up with everything I'm doing. All right, have a good day.